Hello everyone. We have a couple people watching. We're still missing quite a few people. Um, but that's okay. Uh, we'll just wait for some people to tune, start tuning in now. Okay. Um, yeah, we'll just wait a couple minutes and then uh, we'll get started. Matten. We got six people tuning in. We're just going to wait a little bit longer and then we're going to get started with the review. Hopefully the review doesn't have to take too long um, and I'll be answering any questions you guys have. Um, and hopefully you guys can answer my questions too because there are a couple questions uh, I want to ask uh, your class to kind of have a better grasp of what's going on. We still only have six people watching. Maybe I should put another announcement. Alright, we got seven people in. Hopefully we get a couple more. Usually I, I start the stream uh, around 15 to 10 minutes earlier. So if you came in right on... 15-10 uh, minutes earlier you should have heard music with a countdown for the stream um, that'll always be happening so that you know the stream is coming and then when the stream is live um, I'll wait around five minutes for people to start trickling in uh, and then we can go from there okay we got seven people watching now which is fantastic still gotta wait for a couple more people to show up and then we're gonna continue on our way got to get our learning done Okay, I think we should just get started. So, please correct me if I'm wrong within the chat. Um, was the last thing that Miss Lifshitz taught you uh, logarithmic functions? And do you need me to review trig functions with you? That's the question. Because if you don't need me to review trig functions, then we're fine. 
because we want to focus on only the things that we want to kind of talk about today. So like logarithmic functions are, are the big ones right now. Okay. So on your screen here, Okay. So you're fine with trig. Okay, so let's go to logarithmic functions. So the last thing I see that um, I guess Miss Lifshitz posted was um, logarithmic functions part one, math space problems. But I mean, math space can only do so much, in my opinion, um, especially when you only had one lesson. Like, that's not going to do you much. Um, so let's kind of go over logarithmic functions, the basics. Okay. Taking a look at uh, the logarithms, uh, math space, just to see what kind of questions you guys had on it. Um, and it looks like, let's see here, consider the graph. You gotta, let's see the question here. I think it's just about the graphs and domain and range, right? Horizontal asymptote vertical, okay. Very simple stuff. Okay, so. Basics uh, for logarithms, right? Oftentimes we use capital B uh, as our base, or you can use A. It doesn't really matter what the letter is, but the idea here is that um, exponential functions we know are when the x is in the exponent exponent position. So if we have x in the exponent position, this tells you, uh, or this changes a lot about what you, be, you should be expecting about your graph. Now the thing, the reason why we go over exponential functions is because it's directly related to logarithmic functions. And so when we look at something like y equals log x, right, we need to figure out what that even means, right? Where do we even get log from? What is logarithm and all that kind of idea? Like you need to understand how these two are connected. So this was the basic uh, first lesson that Miss Lifshitz uh, went over with you uh, before uh, before the transition here. Okay. So does anyone? So if anyone doesn't know, they, these two are interchangeable, and the main part is that there has to be. Uh, a b in between right and the y's and x's aren't in the, in the perfect positions right now okay but this is this is interchangeable okay so these things here are interchangeable with each other and how are they interchangeable the main thing that we want to understand here when we look at uh, base b to the power of x right this can be converted into log of base b that's the first part right so this is this is a basic concept that we need to understand if we have a power with a base uh, of a certain number when you convert it into a logarithmic function that base is now written beside the long g right down here and this is important so this telling you what base the logarithm logarithm is is important as different bases will change what the function looks like um now a question that I often get is can you even graph other bases no there's actually a specific base that we use to graph and that's log itself so specifically when we use the number log 10 or base 10 is what we'll be using to graph our functions more specifically you don't actually need the 10 this is actually just log on its own okay so the base 10 makes sense is our number system and that's why we are able to graph logarithm base 10. So we have 10 numbers in our system 0 to 9 and those numbers can be used in multiple multiples of 10 to move our decimals up and down 
and thus log base 10 is something we're actually able to graph. And we can't really graph base 2, base 3, base 4. Not possible, but we can analyze what the graphs should look like in census of domain and range because the powers are interchangeable with each other, right? And the reason why these are interchangeable is because the logarithmic function is the inverse of the exponential function, right? And we should understand what it means by inverse. Inverse functions have the opposite domain and range from its original function. So if we have uh, 10 to the power of x, whatever this domain and range is, the domain for logarithm would be the range from here and the range from logarithm would be the domain from here. And so that's the connection we want to make. Is everyone following with me so far? If so, just type a good G in the chat if you're following along so far. Okay, we got a G as are saying, yep. Okay. Aram's good, Matin's good. Perfect. Very good. So now let's talk about actually uh, converting these things, right? So once again, let's go back to our example of, let's say, y equals base 10 to the power of x. Um, if we were to convert these, this to a logarithmic function, right? The first thing we already know is log 10 is written down or just log, right? And the positions of these things, right, the changes that we actually have to understand here is that, well, remember how we said inverse kind of changes its position? Well, you should know, understand getting an inverse function switches where the y and x are, right? Which means these should switch positions too. Look at how that works. That's essentially what the conversion is, okay? So I'm going to plug in numbers and I'll show you what I mean by that. So um, when you have 100 is equal to 10 to the power of 2, which is a true statement. And I'm, hopefully I'm not getting that wrong or else I wouldn't be a math teacher. This can be written as 2 is equal to log of 100. Right. And that's the conversion here. OK. And so this conversion is important. You should be able to convert from one side to another seamlessly. And that's very important for you to understand, especially when we start to solve for x-intercepts, uh, y-intercepts, domain range information about the function. This is very important for you to know, right? How do you convert from a logarithm to a exponential function and back and forth? And there's a couple laws that we're going to be learning later to help you with this transition, OK? So I'm just trying to look here to see uh, if there's anything in particular that I'm missing here. Um, let's see here. Some of the other information that we're kind of going through here. Okay, her lesson was very short on, on part one and part two here. Um, so from what it looks like, yeah, it has an minus of the one. Okay. So graphing uh <clears throat> logarithmic functions okay so if we were to graph logarithmic functions we need to understand what that particularly looks like as well um so we know for example at the bottom here if we have y equals 2 to the power of x right we know that for sure the y-intercept will be uh, at 0 1 and we can kind of draw your graph not the best graph, but you guys get the idea. Okay, so we have a graph. This is the shape of the exponential function that you should know, right? The difference with logarithmic functions is that it's kind of the opposite, and it's quite odd how it works. Okay, quite odd how it works. Okay, so with our logarithmic function, the inverse, if we were to look at y equals the log base 2 of x, and we were to graph this one, the horizontal asymptote will then disappear. So the domain and range, we talked about domain and range here. This should make sense. So if we have the domain, 
of an exponential function here, the domain of this function is, well, x is any real number, right? That makes sense. The range here would be y is any real number such that y is greater than 0, right? So there's our domain and range for our first one. And if you follow the rules of what I told you before, right, these domain and ranges switch because the logarithmic function is the inverse of your exponential function. So my domain for this one is now x is any real number such that x is greater than 0. And for the range, this would be y is any real number. Can you picture what this graph would look like? Just using the domain and range, are you able to visualize what this graph should look like to satisfy these values? First off, it should always stay on the right side of the graph, right? If x is greater than 0. Second, y is any real number, which means it's no longer a horizontal asymptote, it's a vertical asymptote due to this restriction here. So the graph we're looking at is, what do you think? There will be two ways of drawing it, but it will look like that. Right, and this point here is one zero. So you can see that comparison between these two graphs here. Okay, domain, range, flip it, and you'll notice there are significant differences between the two. Okay, are there any questions on this so far? We just have to cover um, basis smaller than uh, 1 and greater than 0, and then that's pretty much it. Are there any questions? I'll give a couple seconds. I think overall we are pretty good. I think most of you are following along right now, which is great. So if we actually follow this rule, right, then we should be able to do it. Uh, how can we use a table to draw it? Good, good question. If it's base 2, anything with logarithm of anything other than 10, you can't use a table to draw it. Your calculators automatically only do base 10 functions on, our, uh, on your um, calculators. They only do base 10 which means you can't actually use a table to draw this function, right? However, that doesn't stop you from identifying some simple key points like the x-intercept here, right? So a good question here is how do we know what the x-intercept is? Well, if y is 0 and you need to find out what x is, right, you can kind of reverse engineer it to try to figure out what x would be in this case it's one any anything log anything to the uh to one is zero that's always going to be true unless the base yeah that's like always going to be true okay so that's a very good question matten you can't use a table unless it's log base 10. Uh, are our tests going to be timed no i will not give you time tests uh it'll i'll just give you a soft deadline and then a hard deadline as well uh, I mean you I would rather you complete it on the day of so that it's fair um, but if you take more time I don't complain about that yeah so hopefully that answers your question Olivia so let's take a look at another example I'm writing huge I wasted this paper but that's okay, okay. let's go through um, simple y is equal to 1 over 2 to the power of x. Okay. So this function, also very similar. When we draw it out, 
this time instead of going up towards the right we know it's decreasing from the left so something like so and we know it goes infinitely both ways and of course that intersection is going to be 0 1 when you plug in 0 y is 1 domain and range same idea get the practice right to practice understanding what domain and range are once again x is any real number here right there's no restrictions on x it goes infinitely both ways and for the range it's still going to be under the category of y is any real number such that y is greater than zero it will never pass or go under zero okay now the hard part uh, for exponential functions yes the base exponential functions it will always be zero one the moment you put in uh, transformations on it like you've learned previously the intersection may change but for the base exponential function it will always be zero one for your y-intercept very good question olivia for the logarithmic function here if we were to use base one half and then x like such the function looks a little different um and it's quite odd how it turns out okay very very odd okay let's write the domain and range first and you'll notice you're like wait the domain and range is going to be very similar oh whoops that should be x i am rushing through things my apologies that should be x and the range is y is any real number but the difference here for this because the base is greater uh, is less than one but greater than zero the function looks a little different and it actually looks something like this So our logarithmic function with a base less than 1 but greater than 0 will have a graph that looks something like this. Okay. Now to kind of build upon Matten's uh, question of how can we even, if you can't use a table to draw it, how the hell are you expecting us to even complete or draw or sketch these graphs? And that's a fair question to ask. <coughs> but you'll notice this point exists. One zero exists, right? The x-intercept for all base logarithmic functions is one zero. For all base exponential functions, it's zero one. If we have this information, the only key point that has to be 100% accurate is that x-intercept or is that y-intercept, right? Well, this one you can graph using a table of values, but for logarithmic functions, that key point of your x-intercept is going to be telling me whether or not you did that graph correctly. Is your graph going through the point that it should be? Right? That's important that I need to know. Right? That's what's going to tell me, do you know where that x-intercept transformed to? That one guaranteed point, where did it go? So on and so forth. And so this is important. This shape will be very similar, right? But there are key points that you should still understand within these logarithmic functions that will show me that you do understand how to graph it. Okay. Are there any other questions? That was essentially what Miss Lifshitz taught you before uh, things ended. And then you were given like two math space assignments, um, which I have to review and, and see if they're even they were helpful to you or not. Um, but I will basically pick up from here. So this is our work that we've done, right? So we have to pick up from here. Now, you 13 people watching, you are blessed people. And the reason why you are blessed is because I'm going to give you a poll. You 13 people are going to determine 
what time of day you're going to have our class every single day next week and from here on out. Your class isn't going to be at 2 p.m., but you're, you have to decide when you want the class to be, and that la our live stream will always be at that time every single day. Okay? So I'm going to give you a link. And you get to vote on what time. So the link is coming on the chat. So I've given you a spread of 9 to 3 p.m. hour uh, time blocks. Please pick your vote right now on that poll. And that will be our time. So the 13 people watching, click the link in the chat. And that's going to be our time for the rest of this semester. And I promise you there will be no other teacher switches. I'm with you till the end. And I promise you, you will be getting your culminating assignment in the middle of next week as well. I don't want, to, I don't want you to flood too much work with you right now. I'm going to give you that in the middle of next week so that you can work on it as well. We're still waiting on a couple of votes. We have 10 votes right now. Maybe we'll wait for one or two more votes and then we're calling it 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, 0. The top two votes were 10 a.m. and 2 p.m. I want you to type in the chat 10 a.m. or 2 p.m. The most is what we're going to go for. They were tied at three votes each. So it's either 10 a.m. or 2 p.m. It was tied at two votes each. So right now, majority says two. So Alexandra, Oliv uh, uh, Azar, and Matthew, I'm sorry. Majority has said 2 p.m. We're going to go for 2 p.m. Okay? So every day, Monday to Friday next week, we'll have a class, 2 p.m. If you have another class at 2, don't worry. Um, you can always watch the video after. Right? So you won't be watching it live, but you can always watch it after and it'll be available for you at all times. Okay? So Alexander, don't you don't panic. Like you'll have access to the videos. Uh, you can just click the link that I post on Google Classroom and you'll have access to it. Okay. So thank you so much for tuning in. I'll post the announcement saying that we have two o'clock class. Monday and Tuesday will be a regular lesson. Wednesday will always be a tutorial. Like you can come in and ask questions. And then Thursday, Friday will be a lesson. All right. So have a good one, everyone. Have a great weekend. I'll see you on Monday at 2 p.m. Peace out.